In this video, I'm going to show you how to factory reset Adobe Captivate. Okay, so you've been running Adobe Captivate for a while. Maybe your hardware is getting old. Maybe the software has been installed on that computer for a long time. And things are starting to get buggy for one reason or another. And you've decided that I need to do something. Let's reset Adobe Captivate back to the way it was when I first installed it. Well, how do you do that? Here's what I'm going to show you today. So here on my desktop, I've got nothing running right now. I've got the Adobe Captivate icon pinned to my taskbar, which is what I recommend, by the way. And I'm going to right click on this and where it says Adobe Captivate 2019 64-bit, I'm going to right click on that again and click on Properties. This is going to open up the Adobe Captivate Properties and I just want to click on Open File Location. Now this will open up uh, Explorer to the location where Adobe Captivate is installed. And you can see there's a ton of files and folders. We're actually looking for a folder called Utils. And there it is right there. So I'm going to double click on that. And you'll see that there are a couple of batch files. One for the Mac, Clean Preferences Mac. So if you were a Mac user, you would click on that. If you're a PC user, you're going to click on Clean Preferences Win.bat. And I'm going to do that now. You'll see a little command prompt window flash on screen for a moment. And that essentially resets everything that Adobe Captivate has set up. Now, the other thing I like to do is I go to my C drive and then go into the users folder. And specifically, I'm looking for the public folder, not my own user folder, but the public folder. We're going to go in there and we're going to look for public documents and you'll see a folder called Adobe. Now, this is where anything that you might be running related to Adobe products is going to be stored, including your Adobe eLearning assets. Now, you can back this up if you wish or you can simply delete it. I'm just going to put the word BAK at the end so that we have a backup of anything that I've downloaded from the asset store before. Now I can go ahead and close this browser and close this properties window and we can go ahead and launch Adobe Captivate and of course uh, see it as if it were brand new. And you can see you even get this welcome message as if you first installed it. I'm going to go ahead and close that. I'm not interested in that. All my recent items are cleared. New is ready to select new projects. There's a few things that I'm going to add to this video here. Essentially, we're done, but there's a few things that I like to do with Captivate before I get started. As you know, when you're running a project, you can go into the preference window and you can change many of the settings and that's going to be related to the project that you have open. But what you can also do is with no project open, go into your preferences window and any changes that you make here become global changes. So all new projects that you start will take on to these characteristics. Now, as you can see here, um, I'm going to publish to um, a specific folder that's set up for my Adobe Captivate projects. I'm not really a fan of that. I'm usually working on a single project at a time. So I'll change this to my desktop and then publish to my desktop folder. Now, the other problem if you're a OneDrive user like I am is that it's going to store any temporary files in the project cache, which in this case is in my users folder. And uh, of course, that's all going to get backed up to the cloud in my OneDrive account. This can be many gigabytes and many hundreds, if not thousands of files. So I like to change this as well. I go to uh, my C drive and right off the root, I have a folder called CP cache. I created this myself and I use that to store any temporary files. The result, of course, is that those won't get backed up to the cloud. I'll save my cloud storage and it'll be using less bandwidth and it will just run better. The next thing I do, this is under general settings. The next thing I do is I go to defaults. Mostly I don't do responsive design, but if I do, I want to enable wrap point. And this allows me to set at what percentage of the screen size 
do I wrap to another row or wrap to another column? So I like to make that a global preference. And the final thing I do is I go into modes and I prefer to use smart shapes instead of the old style Adobe Captivate captions when I'm recording software simulation. So I'll select this and choose rectangle as my smart shape type of choice here. Now all I need to do is click OK and I should be good to go. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.